Good evening and welcome. Um, tonight we're very lucky to have uh, Ted Capstick, our favourite esoteric astrologer, to talk to us about the Cancer full moon and especially the Cancer full moon this uh, coming weekend uh, that we're in the build up to uh, already. So um, from my own just briefly, my own understanding of cancer, which obviously is not nearly as in depth as Ted, uh, cancer rules the home, the family, the planet and its resources, the mass consciousness, and the mothering principle, the nourishing, nurturing principle, and that of service and sacrifice. So you can start to see with those themes um, there's a lot that's relevant to what's going on at the moment. We are coming out of isolation in our homes, out into uh, slowly out into the world, and and we're having to look at how we do that. We've had all sorts. We've almost been concentrated in our families, and we're going out more into our human family. We are also going out into our home in terms of the planet and looking at, you know, what did we learn when we were in isolation in our homes that pertains to looking after our planet as a home. Uh, we're looking at a lot of manipulation of the mass consciousness at the moment. And, you know, we've, we, we're coming back, at, we're getting a lot of mixed messages in that way. Uh, so lots going on. Uh, lots for us to look at individually, but also very much in cancer to look at collectively. So I'm going to uh, hand over to Ted and let him take that forward. So if you unmute yourself, Ted. Yeah. Great. And you go. Okay. Thank you very much, Teresa, and good evening. Um, the idea of the full moon meditations from an esoteric point of view is that we begin to understand objectively if we follow these seed thoughts what is required um, to use and mold the energy that's available we can be in receipt of energy at the full moon uh, and in fact, that's what the ceremony is about. The, 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 the greater amount of reflected light from the sun to the moon in any of the um, full moon ceremonies. But each one, according to the masters, and I'm going to refer uh, a couple of times to the great invocation because it seems to have a lot of relevance um, to, to, to these seed thoughts. Um, we, we, we read in the Great Invocation um, the, per, the purpose which the Masters know and serve. And so we have a body of wisdom which, you know, we can glimpse intuitively if we're able to reach those higher vibrations, but which for the majority of mankind has been set out uh, in what we call the wisdom of the ages. Um, and I'm going to refer, as I will always do, to the master Dwaj Kool, who um, is the master who particularly has brought the esoteric astrology into the orbit of um, the general public from the 50s onwards. And he gave us a set of seed thoughts for each of these festivals. And um, um, the one for cancer, which I want to discuss uh, initially tonight, I build a lighted house and dwell therein. And so um, Teresa ran through a lot of the meanings uh, of the sign of cancer and uh, very impressed. Um, cancer rules the inner world as well. So we have this idea in the outer world that we have a home, something very personal, uh, a group such as a family. And it is primarily the sign of feeling. That feeling being a water sign, it is the most disciplined. And so we get the musicians, the, the painters, the dramatists, the poets, where the emotions are used creatively to uh, 
enhance our richness and understanding in the world of feeling. When we move to the esoteric realm, we know it goes a lot deeper and that meditation rules the inner worlds and therefore it rules sleep because we go into the inner worlds when we sleep. It rules meditation. When we're truly meditating, we are uh, in another world. We close off our eyes in meditation. Um, and the scientists tell us that 80% of our gross input um, is, you know, we've got five senses, of course, is, is taken away just with the, uh, with the eyes being closed. And so what does this mean? I build a lighted house and dwell therein. It means that we have to, or we are advised to, build a structure, an inner structure of energy, which houses our consciousness. Our consciousness can remain attached to the brain and therefore to the five gross senses and all of that diversion that is there in the outer world. Or going by the great authority on this type of um, uh, synthesis, we look at the um, yoga of the eight limbs of yoga of Patanjali, accepted as the world authority in um, explaining that the mind can and needs to be in spiritual development, turned away from those uh, gross uh, senses, those material ideas which are fed by the senses towards the wisdom. And this is what it means by I build a lighted house. The light is the wisdom, it's illumination. And of course, in the great invocation, we get let light descend on earth. It means that we become illuminated and taken from our current position or a position of not knowing to a position of not just knowing, but understanding. That is implicit in cancer as well. And further down in the invocation, uh, when we talk about humanity from the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out. There is an acceptance here that love of the heart and wisdom of the brow is the merging of head and heart. We can't just do it with one or other. We need to blend the two. And of course, later on and right at the end of the invocation, it brings in power. And so we have this trinity again here, which I've mentioned in the previous two full moons, but with different emphasis. And certainly in the Gemini full moon, which we call the Festival of the Christ, we talked a lot about Ray 2. And back at Wesak with Shambhala and the Buddha, I talked about Ray 1. Ray 1 being power, Ray 2 being love, and Ray 3 being mind. So we get already, again from the literature in esoteric psychology, we know that cancer is full of Ray 3, active intelligence. We need to build this vehicle so that we can pull in the influences from the wisdom and set up our paradigm of truth. That's what is required so that we can see things with a discrimination to be able to work in the horizontal line of the cross, as I call it, our service work. And you mentioned this again. Um, but we have to build the lighted house, which is the vertical arm of the cross, which is our link with the soul. And it's interesting that we have this wonderful idea, uh, I think it's wonderful, uh, in e esoteric science of the Rainbow Bridge. You must have talked about this at some of your, uh, over, over the years, the Rainbow Bridge, which links the soul and the personality, it's in mental matter. It links the concrete mind fed by the, fed, the senses and the higher mind, which can approach the truth in an abstract way through symbols, through images, through uh, intuitive understanding. You just know something without it being told to you. And this is the inner machinations of cancer. And it doesn't come as a surprise to us so that cancer rules retreat. We've been on an enforced retreat in lockdown, but in many ways, and many people have said, it's been good. Mm -hmm. I haven't been as busy in the outside world. I've been forced to reflect on and contemplate. This is the, uh, some of the um, uh, richness of, of, of cancer, which is a receptive sign. All the even numbered signs are receptive. 
And so we have Cancer, the fourth sign, ruling the fourth house and uh, saying to us that in order to do our service work and to be a center of radiance, we have to build that lighted uh, reference point in many ways, which will call upon um, and invoke an energy down that path that we can then give out in our service work. But it requires a turning inwards to build the lighted house. And, and it requires effort on all our parts to be able to do that. And it seems interesting to me when I go through the 12 seed thoughts uh, that we're all pretty good if we take will, ray one, love, ray two, mind, ray three. We're pretty good at one, maybe, and a bit okay at another one. But developing that second and third one, which is required for a full expression of the soul, can take us out of our comfort zone. So I may be very comfortable with ray three in mind, but I look at my life and I've had to learn about ray two and heart in my life, particularly. And in later years, back it up with a, a, a use of ray one, which is will. So I think the Trinity, each, each seed thought, each full moon that we get, there will be a different emphasis on the energies. And that's what I feel is valuable to know because the Tibetan Dwarsh Kool says that unless you know these energies objectively, it is much harder to invoke them and then call upon them, uh, have them in your aura and then be able to use them. You need to know and understand which energies you are invoking and what you're going to do with those energies and the three primary ones are the ones that we've said here. And of course, each stanza of the great invocation, ray three, uh, light, ray two, love, and then ray one, purpose and will. And the idea that we bring these and work on these energies will complete our personality infusion with the soul. In the early days, and I don't think, uh, make too much comment about it, but we will probably all pass that stage, Life bounces us about, life roughs us up, and it, it requires that we become integrated in our personality. So the bottom triangle of physical, emotional, and mental becomes a functioning unit, and that's a personality that can be used by the higher self. But the stages I think that we're talking about now, if we're interested in these festivals, is bringing the soul closer to that bottom triad. And that is done through an example of um, uh, moving um, astral solar plexus to um, uh, buddhi at the heart, higher mind, lower mind um, at the throat to higher mind at the brow. And finally, the will of the personality, as your meditations often show, Teresa, the will of the personality being bent towards the will to a greater good that it isn't personal in any way. And we know which ones we'll have to work on because one, as I say, at least we, we, we will be um, very good at it. It won't take us out of our comfort zone to think um, abstractly or to love compassionately or to have some real incentive and initiative and be able to get things done. But Dwarsh Kuhl says, be good at two and the masters will provide you with the third one. And so, but you still have to put the effort in. And some people who I know, the most loving individuals say, oh, you can keep all that mind stuff for me. I don't want to know. And that's their choice. But we're talking about here, a synthesis of the energies. That, that is my understanding of studying. It's the synthesis of the energies that gives us the power to be able to have effective service work uh, in, in this world. And that doesn't mean we can't serve without the full triangle it means that our service opportunities may be limited by our equipedness you know i was always told when i was leaving my job at 53 edward you must be equipped and you must be free we have to be those we are, and the equipping comes with the understanding of these energies I don't think I want to say too much more, actually, Teresa. I think That's keep fine. it nice and, you know, uh, the, 
the inner script has dried up, so it's a good place for me to perhaps pause and okay. allow you to go into the meditation. Yeah, that's lovely. So I, I know the, um, I think of cancer, um, I'm talking about me personally, my spiritual core or my truth, my essence, my home, my soul, my higher self, the seat of where I reside as my home. And in deep meditation and when the outer world has affected me too much and I need to recalibrate, I come home. And I always find that meditation is, feels like I'm coming home and I'm reconnecting with something very strong inside of me. And I think you're right. This time of lockdown has given us an opportunity to do more of that, to self-reflect and look at the way we're living within our home and look at the way we want to go back out into the world. And it, like you talk about the service work. So in many ways, this lockdown time, and especially this time now, it's given us an opportunity to build that vertical alignment so that we are now ready, arms open. And when your palms are open, it's heart open, take it out into the world. But you can have, you know, the alignment, you can have the heart compassion, but you have to have the will to drive it. And it's the will, you know, there's lots of well-meaning people who don't do anything with that. And so the service aspect is very much taking that light that you've built within yourself and letting it shine and in your own unique way out in the world. And like you say, that creative intelligence, each of us will um, express that in a different way, depending how we are put together. But it's an interesting time because I think uh, it's challenging people on many levels because you know there's our our home our planet there's the way we live there's our human family there's our smaller family some of us are still isolated from families with the effect on air travel some of us may always be isolated from families in the future that sort of thing so there's a lot going on uh, and i think cancer is a very nourishing energy uh, for all of this change um, so thanks for that. That's, that's brilliant. Right. What I think we'll do now is we'll go into the meditation. So I'm just going to put a screen up just because I think otherwise I distract you. But I want to share the affirmation of love so that we just bring, bring ourselves together as a group There we go. So this affirmation of love is very definitely bringing us into that heart space, but it's aligning with the soul from the center. I, the soul will outward move. So it's about that horizontal arm. The one who serves will work. So this is very much cancers um, as we progress on a spiritual path, there's a natural, strong desire to want to make a difference, to want to serve. And it can start within your immediate family and then go out into your spiritual family. And sometimes if you're like me, there's a real conflict between the two all the time. <laughs> and you try and do both. So the love of the divine self be shared abroad. We become a light out in the world through my heart. We work as a group. So I want to use this affirmation to bring us together as a group on all levels of those three rays. So it takes will to repeat the affirmation, to come together, to turn up, to watch the recording, to be here live. That's your will. So your will is already invoked just by the fact that you're here. Okay. We're coming into the love. We're coming into uh, the heart energy through this affirmation and aligning it with the consciousness, with the mind, with the, um, 
the creative intelligence aspect. So without any more talking, get yourself comfortable. So you want to be upright, but not rigid. Ideally feet are not crossed, just on the floor, hands comfortably in your lap. And you just repeat this either quietly to yourself or silently to yourself, but we repeat it with the intention that we're coming together as a group. So in this moment, we are putting aside our individual selves and coming together as a group to work in this way. And when we do group meditations, it is an act of service and it is an act of service to the human family. Um, so just take a moment before we repeat, just to send to yourself, let everything that we've talked about go. And now we'll just repeat the affirmation of love. So in the center of all love, I stand. From that center, I, the soul, will outward move. From that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. Now just gently close your eyes. And before we begin the meditation, I just want to ground our energy. I want to connect with our planet. And we do this simply by intending to send a connection either through the soles of your feet down into the earth under the building in which you are, or through the base of your spine. So just feel like you're connecting to your home, our planet Earth connecting to her energy. And we connect as a group. And now I want to, to bring you into this present moment. So just notice your body sitting on the chair. Just notice the clothes on your skin. Take your awareness to the sounds in this moment and just let them come in. And now gently take that awareness to your breath and just start to watch your body breathe. So you're aware of the breath coming in and you're aware of the breath leaving. I want you to imagine that as you breathe, you're opening a beautiful channel right down through the very center of your body. And with each breath, your body is relaxing. And you're just opening that channel until you can take the breath right down deep into your belly. So as you breathe in, your tummy fills with air. As you breathe out, you bring it gently back towards your spine, just in your own natural rhythm. And keep a gentle focus on the breath. And just let that focus on the breath. Take your awareness inward.
Now, if your mind becomes distracted by thoughts, by physical sensations, by sounds, as soon as you become aware you have become distracted, just come back to the breath. And come back without judgment or criticism. Come back with loving kindness. Keep following the breath until you come into a place of stillness. A place inside that is peaceful. Thoughts will still move in your mind, but they just come in, move through and move away. And your focus is on the breath. And now I want you to take your awareness to the center of your chest. And just imagine that you're breathing into the center, into the heart center we find here, the heart chakra. And just imagine your heart filling with light and with love. Let there be a feeling of opening in your chest. So I want you to imagine a beautiful lotus bud. And the bud is closed at the moment, but as you breathe into this heart center, six perfectly formed petals slowly open. Revealing their beauty, their truth and their goodness. And as we open the heart center, so we can connect with our soul, our higher self, the very highest aspects of our being. Now I want you to imagine that you're bringing white or violet purple or gold light down from your higher self and it is pouring in through the crown of your head 
down through the major energy centers or chakras in your body. So there are seven major centers associated with the spine. And they're all filling with this energy, white or violet, purple or gold, whichever resonates best with you. So as these centers align, I want you to imagine that the heart center especially is acting as a vessel to receive and distribute this light throughout your body. So with each breath, more light is pouring down through your crown into the heart to be distributed throughout your physical body to every cell. So imagine that your whole physical body is filling with this purifying, cleansing and healing light. And as this light brings you into a beautiful alignment, it is strengthening your immune system, calming your emotions, and bringing clarity to your mind. Now imagine the light is flowing out into your etheric body, energy body. You could think of it as your aura or the energy field that surrounds your physical body. So you are becoming a being of light. Filled with light and radiating that light out into the energy around you. Now imagine this light is flowing out and filling your home and all living beings within your home. Imagine now it is flowing out into your street. Into your neighborhood. It's flowing out into the broader community in which you live. Now let it flow out and fill your town or your city. Now as the light of the members of all who are engaged in this meditation with us join both those live and those involved with the recording, Feel our combined light filling this country with light. Now imagine that we are filling this part of the world. And that expands and radiates out to fill this hemisphere.
And now it's expanding further to encompass the whole of our world. And the light joins with the light of all groups involved in group meditation, all groups working with the light. Now imagine you can see our planet from space and you can see our planet surrounded by this light. It has radiated out into an aura <clears throat> or an energy field that surrounds our planet. See and feel this light healing her restoring the balance in nature. So that our air is clean and fresh. Our waters pure and clear. Our whole planet healed the animal and plant life flourishing. And now see the light flowing into the hearts and minds of all of mankind. Consciously or unconsciously touching. Bringing peace, the will to good, goodwill and bringing the changes needed so that right relations can develop within each individual with those closest to them within their family community within their nation between nations See this light of understanding and illumination lifting our awareness and the collective consciousness of all so that each individual responds to their part in building a world based on peace and harmony. that in the hearts of mind and minds of all, there is that spark to express in the world their unique qualities and make a difference. Keep holding a space for this energy to pour through you out into the world. and into the hearts and minds of all. Continue to hold a space for this energy. So that it's each and every soul learns to sound their soul note. And the result is a beautiful symphony that transforms the way we live. Keep holding a space for the human family in your heart.
for our home we call planet Earth. So that we may build a lighted house and therein dwell. Keep returning to your heart center and allow the light to pour out from there. Coming down through your crown and into your heart, radiating out. Continue to hold a space and allow the energy to flow. And now gently opening your eyes, you'll see on your screen the words to the great invocation. And we're going to repeat each stanza and then pause for a moment as we visualize the words playing out and having their effects. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, 
Let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that was a very powerful meditation. I don't know if you could feel the energy. <laughs> um, because energy follows thought when you go deep into that quiet place, deep in meditation, and you have these intentions, the energy flows as per your intention. And when we all come together with that same intention, following the same um, thoughts, it's logarithmic in scale, okay? And this is the power. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow you to unmute yourself if you would like to make a comment, if you would like to ask a question, if you've got anything um, that wasn't quite clear or you want more clarification on, or you just anything so just let me know if you want if you've got something to say um <laughs> you look you always look a bit bedazzled <laughs> after the meditation and i get that it is quite strong energy um but you all look very really happy so i think you're in a light you've lit your house <laughs> definitely <laughs> Um, and maybe you're just happy to dwell in there. But uh, Ted, have you got anything more to add? Oh, if you unmute yourself, yeah. Yes, um, I should say that um, if people are interested in the uh, uh, quite quite a full um, exploration of the energies of the Cancer Full Moon. Um, we've probably mentioned it before, but the Lucis Trust do a, a, a monthly meeting. Now, the full moon actually is uh, on Sunday morning, and we may all be in bed at the time, and I try and meditate around the time of the full moon. It's uh, actually 5.44 in the morning, so just before quarter to six on July the 5th. But on at three o'clock uh, on the Saturday afternoon, um, the day before, the Lucis Trust, if you go onto their website and you can just click into the live podcast and hear the talk, which usually is, um, but it's always available afterwards, goes into some of what I've touched on in a lot more detail. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I think if you wanted a double dose, there's a talk broadcast from New York on Friday night, but it's pretty late here. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's 6.30 there, which is 11.30 here. So if you're up and about on Friday night um, and can't do Saturday, you could do that one. And there'll be different speakers, so you get a diff slightly different angle on things, if you like. But, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, perhaps also to mention that if um, anybody was interested last time, I mentioned the Labour of Hercules, the third Labour, which was the 
uh, the gathering of the golden apples of the Hesperides, which was very relevant to Gemini. Uh, that the fourth labour is the capture of the doe or hind. If somebody was interested enough to go and refer to that, but to say the doe or the hind is said to be the intuition. Okay. And it's like you see it in the forest. There, there it is. I just saw it there. Well, it's gone now. It's gone. Oh, it's over there. It's that. Uh, we have to kind of capture it. And this is hard work. This it's it's making the intuitive life, which is fed by cancer, the intuitive life more available to us. Okay. So um, we, through meditation, mm -hmm. will create a channel, uh, and it's where we are just able to know there's a problem and it needs solution, and we know the answer. Mm. It's making that feeling more commonplace. Yeah. And this was the fourth labour that Hercules had to do. And all these labours are meant to be symbolic and they're not just myths. These are problems that each human has to go through in this life. Usually one or more labours are particularly important. If we are intuitive, then we may not have such a problem with this particular labour. But we might when it comes to cutting off the nine-headed hydra, which we'll talk about maybe at Scorpio. And we have three tests on the physical, three on the emotional, and three on the mental, which I think, from my experience, pretty much everybody has to do the eighth labour okay. in its life because there's so much to it, to cutting off the nine heads. And they're all things that challenge us. So I think these labours of Hercules are worth looking into. Mm. Uh, they're not particularly um, owned by anybody um other than the fact that these truths that these myths are as gary will always attest to have stood the test of time yeah, yeah. you know the tarot for example it would have died out if it didn't have some truth exactly the and they are, they are key yeah. they are keys into the intuition aren't they and often when we're developing that capacity to listen to the intuition, it really helps to have things to help until we get so that, um, because intuition is funny. It is like that dough, like you said, Ooh. and sometimes it will flash through your mind and it, it, you're not aware of it, especially if your mind is very busy mm -hmm. with thoughts. Um, yeah. Yeah. So just to still the mind and, you know, you know, if you sit in a forest, the, the doe will come yeah. quietly. I, I, I think what's so lovely about it, and this is something that I learned in this life, um, the doe will bring information that's not generated by you. We can sometimes become prisoners of our own thoughts. Yeah. We can take the wisdom and we can turn it round to the way we want. We can cherry pick it. And we think, oh, I know I've got this. <laughs> but the intuition, that's something that at this stage in evolution is beyond us. And we have to become part of something greater. Not take that greater thing to us and turn it round as we want it to be turned round. You know? And, and you know, there is in these receptive signs like cancer, a degree of surrender. Yes. A degree of surrender is required to give up that scientific, rational, analytical, I want to know this, uh, this is how, therefore this proves that, therefore that is that, etc. Yes, but that's dominated by the human brain, which actually, when the human brain is laid to rest, either temporarily in sleep or permanently at death, we enter into higher consciousness. That's so right. we have to use the brain in the way it's meant for, that's to help us live this physical life down there, and let the thinking go beyond and be given to us by, 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 by this, um, this, this dome, which is the, the truth in higher abstract mind, but the truth uh, that is pure. It's not tainted by us because we might receive it and not like it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but it's still the truth. It's still the truth. It doesn't have our own stamp of, you know, we want to make it this way. You know, I've read lots of things over the years and I thought, I've got my paradigm, I've got it set up. And then I've read something and it completely smashes it. And I've gone to bed that night thinking, hi, I used to, yeah, and it used to irk me. Now I say, okay, just let it keep being molded and remolded and re, mm -hmm. and I'm just moving slowly towards a bit of a greater truth. 
Yeah. I think that's what this labor is about. But it's about receptivity. It's about the work you do with um, meditation. It's about retreat. It's about surrender. It's about, you know, allowing that light, which would be the dough, that light of intuition to come in and accept it and say, right, I'm not the best person to say what righteousness is, but there is a defining line and light, which is I'm going to become part of that rather than saying, no, I don't want that organisation. No. Oh, you suit me. We've actually got to forget all of that and allow ourselves to be overtaken, as it were, by this greater truth. And I found that difficult, but it is a process of surrender. It is. And I, I think of it as it, we're, we're a bit like a radio or our, our brain is a bit like a radio. So, you know, the meditation, if you like, tunes the station so that that um, clear, intuitive uh, wisdom can come through. A lot of the time, people can't, they don't want to put in the effort to tune their radio, and they just leave the static. <laughs> yeah. or, they, or they tune to a particular station they want to, rather than the one that's best. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Has anybody else got any questions or comments? Uh, Michael, if you unmute yourself. Speaking as a Cantarian, <laughs> I can say firsthand that the, the most important aspect really is the receptivity. Mm. Because if you think about it, intuition is just about leaving yourself open to receive. And this is kind of the basis of all of all knowledge. I think this is one of the reasons why the ego is so destructive, because once you have an ego, you think you are the focal point. But as long as you remain intuitive and receptive, you, you don't think you are the focal point and you are just an aspect of the greater whole. And as long as you retain that humility and that, that willingness to receive, uh, information and coincidences and, and 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 new knowledge, you can you can piece that together. It's just it's just the ego. It's kind of the the positive, the more fiery element that is the problem. So, people who are who have kind of this respect, receptive and intuitive aspects, which women do naturally, um, is a real strength, not not a weakness. I think society regards it as, a, as, as kind of a, a weakness, but it really is uh, a, an empowering thing. It, but it's not an it's not a it's not a controlling element. That's all I was going to add. No, that's that's wonderful. Very well put. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I would also say that the only reason that women appear to be more intuitive is because it's acceptable for us to use that. Men are just as intuitive, can be just as intuitive. It's just the way we kind of socialize boys and girls to, into women and men means that it's not something that in the, the way of becoming a man is valued. Um, and so, but, so for, for men out there, you can be just as intuitive it's just that women have had a bit more practice because of the way that we are brought up and socialized. In some cultures, that's completely different. Um, but never think, oh, I'm not very intuitive. It's, a, you know, yes, you are. Um, it's, and a lot of it is creating the space. And like Michael said, being receptive being open to be open is feminine that is the feminine aspect but we all have masculine and feminine within us uh, and our society unfortunately is a bit skewed toward the masculine but if we can bring this beautiful balance between them um, we can be open to the intuitive and and I think it can be a, a revelation uh, when it starts coming through because it just life is easier <laughs> you're not on your own you don't have to work it all out you get a lot of help um, and you can even get to the stage where you you know I, I was trying to nut something out yesterday and um, I couldn't solve the problem and I said to my son I'm just going to go for a walk and he's like 
don't you have to get that finished? I'm like, no, I'm going for a walk. And I came back after an hour's walk down by the river and in the woods, full of energy because I had the whole answer. I know what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing this. And it just arrived as a whole answer. I knew I was getting nowhere trying to use my brain and my objective logical mind to try and nut it out. It just, it wasn't happening. It wasn't the way to do it. So the answer was <clears throat> go for a walk, surrender. And sure enough, it just comes. And that happens every time so much so that I trust it. And if I do have a problem, I just go for a walk or go to the beach or go for a run or go and do something um, that takes me out of my head and into my body, into my environment and opens me up. Um, and you just come to trust it. Uh, and it's easier. I didn't, that would have taken me hours to nut that out. And the solution arrived as a beautiful package complete with all the willpower and enthusiasm I needed to implement it. Easy. Um, so it's, a lot of it is trust and it's a process. The more you do it, like anything, the better you, you become at it. But the capacity is there in everybody. And that's what I want to emphasize because um, it, it is there. It's just like a muscle. You just got to use it to keep it strong. Okay. <laughs> Right, have we got any other? Paula. <laughs> so Paula's just saying how she loves these talks on a Thursday after a hard day at work. We love having you. Okay. Right. Yeah. If, um, if no one's got any more questions, comments, um, I think I'll leave you to your own little cancer retreat. Um, and uh, enjoy this full moon. <laughs> Sometimes cancer, uh, because it's linked to the home and family on the out outside world, it can sometimes be a little challenging. <laughs> okay. So, uh, for you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes at the end of the full moon period, I feel like, oh, I've got through it. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> so go and enjoy. And thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Yeah.